Feno is a science center built by Zaha Hadid at Wolfsburg in Germany from 2000 to 2005. This is Wolfsburg, a city of 120,000 inhabitants between Berlin and Hanover, entirely built by Volkswagen in 1938. In 2005, the city completed the construction of a new addition, a science center, a statement of identity in the face of its powerful taxpayers. This balance of power is unfavorable to the city. The local factory employs 50,000 people and is one of the largest in Europe. In 1998, Volkswagen launched a new concept, the Autostart, the city of the car. The idea is to make the buying a new car into a fun ceremony, a family outing. There are games for the children and shops. In the center of a park, there are pavilions dedicated to all the group's marks. One and a half million visitors every year make this a success. A canal and rail track separate the factory and autostart from the city. That is where Wolfsburg chose to site its symbolic building, a strategic site between the entrance to the station through which most of the autostart visitors pass and the new footbridge they cross. The deputy cultural councillor in Wolfsburg, Wolfgang Guthardt, was the first to launch the idea of a science centre all about learning and amusement for children and adults. He went around the world to test his proposal, visiting the Winter Tour Science Centre and the Exploratorium in San Francisco. The Guggenheim Museum in Bilbao taught us that architecture can bring in the crowds. In order to house its scientific games area, Wolfsburg disregarded the prudent counsels of the consultants and undertook an heroic enterprise, an international architectural competition. The winning architect is especially celebrated for a large number of theoretical plans and works, what is known as paper architecture, and until now has only accomplished rather modest projects the Vitra factory fire station, a tram terminus at Strasbourg, and a ski jump at Innsbruck. An Iraqi and a woman, her name is Zaha Hadid. The teaching of maths in the Arab world in Iraq when I was a kid, geometry, trigonometry, was a very essential part of the whole education. It was like learning, spelling or writing. I was very good at it. And then I did a degree in maths in Beirut first. I was not doing architecture at that time. I liked maths. I studied architecture in London and I didn't go back to Iraq for the last 25 years. And only recently, when I began going back to these countries, Istanbul or Beirut, did I begin to connect these things, geometry, maths and architecture and it began to make sense. The Feno project is notable for satisfying two ambitions. For Zaha Hadid, it is one of her first major tasks, and for the city, it is a new image. Yet the building is surprisingly small. It's only 60 meters high and 150 meters long, aligned with the railway tracks, it is a single triangular concrete block. No monumental facade, without a break, all in concrete. Feno looks like nothing else known. It's impossible to think what it houses. What draws the eye are the curious bases made of concrete and glass, rounded forms rising from the ground.
The architect does not accept the term piles, but prefers to call them cones, cones with the point buried in the ground and widening as they rise upwards, leaning almost ready to topple, astonishing volumes. There are ten of them, each unique, either by its shape, its inclination or its curvature. It is concrete that makes these shapes possible, careful shuttering work with planks that shape and mark the cones during pouring, emphasises the geometry and the tension of the volumes. Large vaults supporting the upper part include an alignment of jutting diamond shapes, prefabricated in concrete and accommodating lighting. The same sculptural intention affects the cones, the curves of the vaulting, and the diamond patterning. We were doing a project for a bridge in Abu Dhabi. The structure was so enormous that you could almost occupy the structure. So it is not a new idea for us. A long time ago, I did many studies about how buildings should land on the ground, how they should occupy the ground. Some buildings need light presence on the ground. Others need a much heavier presence. So we moved away from the idea of the piloti lifting the building from the ground to a much more complex idea where the structure is occupied. The cones carry the upper level. They free the ground. But unlike the piles so much favoured by Le Corbusier, these are inhabited piles, with windows, display panels or sliding glass doors. Each of them holds necessities pertinent to the exhibition area. Group reception, public reception, restaurant, auditorium, bar, workshops, the shop. The cones also facilitate vertical circulation. For more than a century, modern architecture has sought to unify form and function or constructive structure and shape. Here, Zaha Hadid wanted to unify the three terms. Form, function and constructive structure are all one. The whole of the main exhibition area is taken up by 250 scientific experiments. They are divided into eight families, vision, energy, matter, movement, information, with each experiment being autonomous. They are intended for the curious visitor, who is happy to converse with a simple mechanism, content to provoke a phenomenon to observe. Phenomena, the language nature uses to speak to us. It is a large open space to play in. No closed off rooms, no corridors, no set path. Each visitor can wander at will through a large open area, a free plan, punctuated by slopes, galleries, openings and prospects. That may seem incomprehensible, but there is nothing mysterious about it. Everyone will understand that it is up to them to organize their own choice of experiments and observations. Everything flows easily. No starts and stops. Everything is in relief and gently sloping. 
Everything is an invitation to wander from one point of view to the next. The only points of reference are the cones. They polarize the space, crystallize the territories, suggest paths. They pass through the whole of the upper volume and carry the metallic roofing. Ten cones are needed to bear the weight of the main floor. Only five are required to support the roof framing and the roof. bearing the roof or holding up the exhibition area. In one of the cones, the architect doubles up the load-bearing structure. The largest cone springs from the ground and stops at the first level. In the middle, a narrow, blind concrete shaft pierces the whole of the floor to carry the roofing frame and the roof, a cone within a cone. The central cone is just an empty drum going up from the car park, opening at the roof level, a hollow shaft. You might believe that the architect has defined the building from base to apex, giving rise to a constructive structure. The 3D model from Zahar Hadid's competition submission demonstrates a quite different sort of work logic. It upturns the point of view, as if the principal level had melted here and there, as if gravitational pull was acting on a magnetic field, something between a cheese fondue and a black hole. The architect did not build the building upwards, she brought it down to the ground. This is how you can achieve another kind of spatial experience. It is more achievable. The burden has been lifted that we can only ever do dogmatic modernist projects, which is mass producing and so on. Through complexity, now you can create spatial experience, which can be equally calming or equally thrilling. I would call it a landscape. Although the idea is not to copy landscape, literally. It is a process where you begin with a new organization of the plan, then you move towards a fluid kind of morphology and flexibility. What you achieve is creating a landscape. The landscape is the plan. Landscape, a word associated with walks and postcards with their point of view. Rarely used in architecture, for that supposes a path, a progression of points of view, a way of being part of the world and yet feeling space. That is what Zaha Hadid wants to create. Craters. Canyons. Slopes. The architect uses the lines of the five truncated cones appearing on the surface of the exhibition floor to invent new figures that structure a landscape. And continuing her quest for complexity, she doubles the level of part of the main area, which she refers to as the pocket. She thus doubles the exhibition space. 
she creates a new complex with multiple paths and perspectives. An imaginary landscape to excite the curiosity of the visitor. Nothing is for nothing. Everything is useful. The upper level creates shade, transparencies and vertigo. Galleries open onto the lower level of the pocket, where a sunken valley, a volcanic crater, becomes a conference venue. In Feno, experimenting with the feeling of space and discovering the landscape are on the same plan as experiments with vision, matter or energy. For provoking a visitor to physical activity in order to understand natural phenomena, this is the ideal landscape. Experimentiert Landschaft is the German alternative title for the building, a play on words, the experimental landscape and the landscape to feel. This is a conceptual landscape that does not refer to nature. It is pure geometry, it's abstract, while being functional. A paradox. By way of a sky, the architect introduces the conceptual language of the grid, a double metallic lattice that in one sweep covers the whole of the 6,000 square metre triangular floor. But the frame does more than cover. It plays a full part in ensuring the stability of the building. The ceiling follows the relief pattern, twinning the deformation of the landscape floor below. With ironic fulfillment, the fixing of the upper grid to the top of the five cones is deliberately concealed. The roofing seems to float above the experiments. In the model made for the competition, for the south side, the architect had planned a large glass facade. During the construction, she suggested a different facade to protect the experiments from the light. Through a constellation of openings evocative of speed, she fragmented the view of the cityscape. Towards the north, she reversed her proposal so as to open up wide to the industrial landscape. It is Feno's unique situation in the city that enables this confrontation between two different environments. The building is in front of the industrial zone and opens onto the main city street. It's at once at the centre and the edge of the city. The reason that Zahar Hadid won the competition was because of her solution for this question. Feno is a porous urban mass. Lifted from the ground, the building frames views of the factory or the city and lets pedestrians flow by. It has become a crossroads rather than a barrier. The cones create a large covered area, an empty space defined by the constructed shapes and the concrete vaulting. Protected by Feno, but belonging to the city, a public space. The architect refuses to allow any plants on the Faino plot. There will be neither trees nor flowers. And yet with its shades of grey, its contours and slopes, its effects of light and shade, 
This landscape has a unique charm. Freed from the constraints of the right angle, the building seems to spring from the contours of the earth. In the 20th century, this was known as organic architecture. Zaha Hadid objects to this definition, but it's hard to avoid. Zaha Hadid has given the city a public space. How should this new utility be treated? Does it need a new lighting, public benches, street signs? Should it house organized events? When it installed two giant screens for the 2006 Football World Cup, the city gave its first answer. Not a sports ground, nor a meeting room. The space between the cones is a free area to find out how to be together. Facing Fainel, Autostart, the city of the car, would have liked to see the city's new acquisition built elsewhere in another district, where it would not cast its shadow on Autostart. The footbridge over the canal and the railway bears the trace of this inevitable rivalry. On the Autostart side, a metal bridge with escalators. On the Fainel side, a concrete ramp. This junction of metal and concrete might seem banal. It's an illustration of the compromise to solve a quarrel between neighbors. The Autostart bridge had to be cut and the escalators cut back to link up with the ramp designed by the architect. A show of strength between rival powers and a way of joining the glass and metal architecture of the multinational to the concrete landscape by Zaha Hadid. It is never easy with men. It is so easy for them to criticize you. Men don't know how to treat you or how to behave with you, especially when you are much younger. It is impossible. It is a very difficult job. I don't know whether that's easier for men. I've never been a man. Let's say that for men it's difficult. Just triple it or quadruple it for a woman. It is quite liberating to be a woman in this profession because I don't even know the rules men impose on themselves. I don't have to abide by these rules. The only woman to have been awarded the prestigious Pritzker Prize, Zaha Hadid wants to reconcile a sculptural desire with the needs of a public area, even to the extent of creating a non-figurative landscape into a large building filled with games and children. She is alone in pursuing her dream of a landscape that will be the plan. When an architect invents a solution for resolving several problems at once, they say that that is grand architecture. 